Hello everyone, welcome to this new Wilson DL guide. So as far as everyone knows, we are in patch 1070. A lot of stuff have changed since 1050, but you know that one of, from 1050 to 1070, nothing has changed. They, the staff actually uh, corrected a, a, a few key things, but not from the build's points of view. So what are we gonna see today? Today I'm gonna show you a slightly different build for the meta. Uh, you know, everyone is playing dagger, everyone is playing one hundred and shield, everyone is playing uh, ailments with bows, stabs, uh, and so on. Uh, we are actually gonna play ailments as well, that's for sure. But we are gonna do that in a uh, less dependent way. We are gonna play ailments until a certain point. And I'm gonna show you and explain you why and everything. I'm gonna explain everything on this video guide. Uh, so, this build is around Bleeding Edge. Uh, it's a two-handed build, not one-handed. And if you're asking why am I playing two-handed, it's because, well, I like to play uh, very aggressive characters. And I feel like playing with one and a shield is not suiting my playstyle. So I have never played with one and a shield, I have to say that. This build right now is uh, gonna be shown in the way it is today. I usually uh, modify my builds every two days, every couple of days to find more solutions or more combinations. Uh, what I feel like is that at the moment, right now, the build I'm gonna show you today is the most effective one I've made so far. So, uh, this build is actually very, very, very effective. You can easily melt everything. You can easily melt 187s. You can easily melt uh, untainted runs. You can easily tank. Yeah, it's true. You can tank like hell. I'm gonna show you everything. I'm gonna. I'm just giving a presentation right now. But uh, as soon as we are going to look at the skills, at the items, at the playstyle, at everything, we are going to uh, understand everything and why I say this word right with these words right now. So uh, yes, we are super tanky. Uh, we maybe. Uh, I, I'm not sure 100%, but I bet I can say we are even tankier than uh, one and then shields build. And while we tank so much, we are even gonna do a lot of more damage than one and builds. Yes, uh, we are gonna to do uh, a medium value of 1.5 million per hit damage, up to peaks of uh, 50 millions. Uh, 50 millions are gonna show up in group mostly because, you know, when you play in group uh, damage is gonna be a lot higher, uh, while playing solo I reach something like 10 to 12 millions only when there are super long fights, you know. After the patch changes, uh, the last bosses, uh, if taken one to one, are gonna take some time to be killed, and that's because you cannot apply ailments to last bosses. So, what everyone does during these high levels ex expeditions is just they're gonna uh, pack a lot of whelps, they're gonna just run, go straight. Uh, to the boss when they're where they're near it, so that the, all the whelps will follow the character into the boss fights, and they can stack ailments and deal a lot of damage in a short time to the boss. And that's the best way and the fastest way to kill expedition last bosses. That's for sure. But no problem because even if we had a situation in which we should one v one last bosses, you know. Uh, something like there are no whelps near the boss, we are still gonna uh, deal more than 1 million damage per hit to the boss. That's 
there is no problem to that. So um, let's build, uh, let, sorry, let's move on into the build. I'm gonna show you uh, step by step. I want you to understand every mechanic in the build so that if you want to play this build, uh, you don't have, you don't just have to watch this video and copy paste it. But if you learn the mechanics, you can do uh, different versions of this build and you can understand how to improve your gear, your equipment based on this build. So I want to give you everything in order to understand how to play this build effectively. So in order to do so, I'm going to start with the equipment and the uh, character points. And then I will move on into the uh, passive skill tree. And that's because I'm gonna show you some mechanics uh, which are gonna be connected with passive skill trees. So let's move on into the equipment first. Um, I played the trial, but the first thing I wanna say is that this build can easily be played without the trial. And that's because we are gonna deal a lot of damage, a lot of damage. Um, the difference is that the trial allows us to, ga to, to gain a free, uh, a free sixth skill, which is a mark of impurity, of course, yeah, everyone knows that. Mark of impurity is gonna uh, augment the damage we are gonna do to whelps, bosses and mobs, so it's so damn good for that reason. And if you lack a trial and you want to get one, this is actually a good moment to do so because trials in the last days have been something like filling the market so quickly because people farmed it, farmed it, farmed it, farmed it, that right now you can easily buy one for three to four millions or trade it for so. Uh, so if you want to get a trial, yes, do so because trial is gonna uh, improve every build not just this one is gonna improve every build for a large amount the trial is just the best item in the entire game for the moment uh, so let's dive into the other equipment let's start with the weapon i play a two-handed battleaxe uh it's 1148 damage do you need so much damage into a weapon well yes and no you are fine to go with uh, any 1 plus KK damage, so 1000 and more damage. The higher damage, the better, of course. The most important thing is that the weapon has to be uh, physical, has to deal material damage because we are running a material build and my weapon has 30% uh, critical damage. Is it needed? No. Is it appreciated? Yes. Because, of course, we are going to run a critical damage build. So, if the weapon has critical damage stat, it's way better. But you're not gonna see a large uh, improvement of damage if you pass from a weapon with that critical damage to a weapon with critical damage. So, if you have, uh, if you already have a 1000 plus damage weapon, which has not critical damage, it's fine. You can keep it and uh, focus on the other gear first. Uh, what are we gonna base our build into? So we want to run as many bruiser guild as possible. We are not running um, heavy gear and we are not playing the passive which is augmenting our all resistances. This is why I wanted to start with the inventory, because there are a lot of things I'm going to do uh, different from the actual meta. I'm not running heavy. Uh, I'm running just the boots, because I managed to craft these boots, which are pretty much nice. They are not, of course, the GT. Uh, my gear is not GG tier, it's just high tier to top tier, but no GG tier. I managed to craft these boots, which are pretty nice to me, 45% material damage, 
uh, toughness and movement speed. That's 40% movement speed mostly is well appreciated. Um, what are we gonna look to? Uh, what, what, what are we gonna look for into the uh, gear? We are gonna look for health, as much as health as possible. So as you can see, I run uh, 1,090. One, uh, sorry, uh, 1,974 health. Then we run just uh, 50, 50, 522 health, 2,587 health, 6,000. 871 health, uh, 372, 2409, 2430, and that's just giving the 60, 68 toughness. Um, so yeah, we want health. In Even in the accessories, you want health. So 1983 health, uh, we don't have health here, unfortunately, but this ring is pretty much important for the flat fire and lightning damage for the ailments, you know that. And then 1,663 uh, 1, health. So, yeah, on the base stats, we want as much health as, much health as possible. Uh, you may have noticed I play block chances, sockets. You wanna wonder why? Well, it's because we are gonna uh, have a hundred, a hundred percent block chance. Yes, one hundred percent. We're gonna block everything. This is why I run these sockets. I'm gonna show you in a few as well. But as you can see right now, at the moment, the block chance is seventy-two percent. If we buff ourselves. 87% if we change the stack 100% so we're gonna block everything as you can see so what other stats are we gonna look for we're gonna look for uh, damage or material damage material damage is better because the percentage is higher so if you get material damage is better and then we're gonna look for transfer time between willpower and rage if you get uh, more stats if you want more good stats for your gear, look for Ferocity. We are running a Ferocity build, not Toughness build. This is one more thing I'm gonna do different from the actual meta. Everyone is playing Toughness. Of course, Toughness is good. Of course, you get a lot of health. We already have um, a large amount of pull. So what, we're gonna, what we want to do is to reach as much critical chance as possible we're gonna we have right now 48 48.2 it's a little bit lower than a build i had a couple of days ago i want to reach uh at least 50 percent but yeah we're gonna play ferocity first so yeah if you have any more uh, stats to look for into the gear so the wanted stats are base health uh, as much as, as possible, uh, material damage, transfer time between uh, willpower and rage, and ferocity. If you get more good stats, you're welcome. You know, in this helm I have plus 58 max willpower and rage, which is always appreciated for, sorry, for melee builds because melee builds are gonna. Uh, stun for rage so that's good uh, so as you can see material damage here rage will power ferocity material damage here rage will power uh, there's no ferocity here but 2587 health is a lot it's fine as it is for me you can look for better gear of course material damage rage will power ferocity material damage uh, there's no material damage here sorry uh, but we have ferocity, we have region willpower, and we have a lot of health. Then we have material damage, transfer time between willpower and rage, ferocity, material damage. There is no transfer time and ferocity, but we have toughness and movement speed. Movement, movement speed is mandatory for the boots. So if you're gonna look for some boots, they have to be with movement speed. 
don't get them if they don't have muffled bit. And that's because we are running a uh, disallowing vessel. Disallowing vessel is gonna slow our movement, as you can see right now. It's gonna be slowed for a lot. There's no worry though, uh, we use uh, warpath. We use warpath to move into uh, rifts and into untainted runs. So there's no problem for disallowing vessel. But if you're in town, if you're with friends, if you're chilling and you want to just move, yeah, base movement is gonna be denied by disallowing vessel. That's why we want movement speed. Okay, so uh, as for the sockets, as I told you, we want to get four sockets on just four with block chunks. We need exactly just four of them because, uh, as I showed you uh, a little bit before, with these sockets we can reach 100% block chunks, and 100% block chunks mean means we are going to take a lot of less damage. All the rest spend into health. We want as many as much health as possible. So four into block chance, the other two into health. As far as of the sockets for uh, accessories, we want transfer time between willpower and rage because every melee build starves for rage. That's for sure. Then about the accessories, we want, of course, every each of our accessories has to be with critical damage. And if they have critical damage, then you can look for the same stats we looked into the gear. So material damage, transfer time, and maximum health. So accessory has to be with critical damage, transfer time, material damage, health. There's no transfer time, there's no alt here, but um, as far as for the rings, you want to gain as many uh, elemental damage flat stats as possible, because we want to apply ailments, not all of them, we want to apply just five ailments, and to do so, we're gonna go into some, just some flat stats. So we'll have fire and lightning here, then I have run damage. Run damage is fine because our build is material, we do a lot of run damage with bleeding edge, so run damage is fine as well. Then I have critical damage, and then the other ring, frost damage, material damage, maximum health, and unfortunately I don't have uh, transfer time, but I have 107 max willpower and rage, which is always welcome. Uh, okay, so now we can now we saw uh, the gear required. It it, this gear is not level dependent, and if you don't have the trial, you can go for a belt like this one. So, as you can see, material damage. Physical damage, friend damage, flat flat stats are always welcome because flat stats give major boosts than percentage stats. Uh, there's no health here, so I'm just I'm still trying to uh, craft this one. Uh, so let's move on into the stats. As I told you, you want to spec on ferocity, but before before spending points into ferocity, so um, I'm, I'm making an example. Let's uh, let's assume you are a 70 plus level build and you want to reset your attributes. Okay, uh, when you reset your attributes and spend the points, you want to get to uh, 400 toughness first. 400 toughness is uh, mandatory to reach um, 100k health. I have 110 because uh, of my gear, but you want to have more than 100k, and to do so, we're gonna have 400 toughness. All the rest of the points into ferocity, everything else into ferocity. There is no mistake in spending points in, into ferocity. So, uh, at the moment, the average damage is. 37,000 
Uh, of course, once we have ailments, it's gonna raise up, uh, I believe, up to uh, 100k. We deal physical, toxic, ram, fire, frost, lightning, thanks to the accessories. And we have poison and blind chances, uh, which are gonna apply to uh, bleeding edge as well. Um, okay. Why do I say we are less dependent on stats? Because uh, we deal a lot of damage. So we don't need to have seven stacks, seven different stacks to gain uh, the chance to deal more than two million damage because we are actually gonna exceed two million damage with, with less than seven stacks, with just four or five stacks. I'm gonna show you later in a run. So how is this possible? Let me show you how this is possible by looking into the passive nodes. Uh, okay, this is this might be confusing because I have rotated everything. I have rotated each uh, quadrant. So I'm gonna show you step by step why I did make these choices and why there are some nodes I didn't take which you might consider mandatory for every ailment build. So uh, of course let's start with the uh, soldier tree. We have melee weapon damage, critical damage. Again, again, of course we want to take the white card because of the 60% critical chance score. One first difference is that I didn't take this part. So I have no rage period taken. Uh, I had it in the previous build I made a couple of days ago. I decided to remove it because, uh, yes, this build is a little bit more starving for rage but I can easily uh, refill my rage. I can easily do that. So uh, for the time being, I'm fine with this. So I just saved uh, three points up to five points into rage conservation to spend them as well. Uh, then we go at damage critical chance. So let's go. Let's move into this part, which is um, an important part for ailments build. Uh, I didn't take the attrition strategist. So I have no 60% element chance score, I have no material element chance score, and I have no 8% uh, damage. I don't care for this. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to get max willpower and rage. So I just took this node, this node, and this node. This is mandatory. We want as many as much rage as possible, mostly because we don't have the uh, rage period taken, so we, can, we are not an endless rage build. So we want max willpower and rage. Uh, let's get from let's get the right part first. So from here, I of course taken merciless lethality to get the 60% critical damage, and then I moved up and take and took clandestine um, execution <clears throat> to gain the 25% uh, damage boost when I 1v1. The last bosses. So, as I told you, if you um, if you get in the chance or in the unlock uh, to face uh, last rift bosses alone, uh, this node is very important because after the patch notes, uh, killing killing those bosses in one v one is gonna take some time, and that's because you cannot apply ailments stacks to uh, the final bosses. Then I moved here and I wanted to take Disallow Investor, as I showed you. So Disallow Investor is a, uh, a node I love. It's very, very, very important because uh, you gain stationary points and by using Bleeding Edge, I'm going to show you as well. Uh, so we're going to spam Bleeding Edge in this way. Uh, by using Bleeding Edge in this way, we are going to stand still. And when we stand still, uh, we gain stationary points. So when we gain stationary points for each of them, we are going to raise our damage for 6%. So uh, 10 points means 60% increased damage. Okay, we lose movement speed, but as I told you, we're going to uh, just uh, walk with Warpath. And by using Warpath, as I, I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to place here to move there. Uh, let's recharge. If I move with Warpath, 
no points is gonna be taken so this is just perfect because it stacks perfectly uh, then I took the uh, siege breaker node just to increase my uh, alt regeneration not for the all resistances I'm gonna show you why our all resistances is gonna be low 4.8 4.7 3.9 we don't need them we don't need them we are gonna just tank thanks to uh branded burst i'm gonna show you branded burst in a few and thanks to the block chance and block efficiency uh, as you can see i have uh 20 something like 24.5 percent of block efficiency and this percentage combined with branded burst is gonna deny pretty much the 90% of the damage we receive. Sorry. So let's move on. Uh, okay, so we took these nodes. Uh, one uh, point I would like to clear is that here this node is plus 15% block, block efficiency. Uh, you could uh, choose to run the 20% block efficiency. Uh, I didn't do that because, you know, for the, for those rare times in which we dodge, dodge means we you take no damage. So I decided to just give the 15% block efficiency uh, more importance because I just don't want it. I just didn't want it to lose uh, the passive dodge chance score. Then moving right, we take the attack damage and critical damage into the sacred orb. So every time we block, we apply weakness and we have a 100% block percentage. So we are always applying weakness stacks to our enemies. And that's already one ailment. That's a 100% to be sure ailment. And since we have 100% block, uh, block chance, we don't need to take these uh, one weakness that's in victim and block because we already applied two. Then we move right, ferocity into uh, kingless ages, 6% of the block chance and allows any weapon to block. <clears throat> this is self explanatory. We want to block and we want to have 100% block chance, and that's it. Uh, we take this one for 20% block efficiency, it's very, very important. And that's it for this part. So let's move to the left part. So from here, we go into the Kabbalist tree, and we take, uh, we take Immortal Offering, because we want to get the damage boost for the ailments. We are not going to take Insidious Decay, because... Uh, yeah, it's true that you apply two more stacks, but we are not stacks dependent so much. And besides, getting Insidious Decay uh, denies us a 30% damage decrease. So, no. I want to deal damage, I I'm going to deal a very high burst damage, so I don't want Insidious Decay. Then we move up this way. We took the movement speed, uh, we took wisdom, we took uh, greasy afflictions for self-explanatory reasons. We want to apply ailments as for a certain point of view. Then we move left, we go here, and here we're gonna go. Uh, first, I'm gonna show you power of the first man, of course. We're going to apply stacks, stacks, stacks. And then we go up here, which is uh, furious appetite. So furious appetite, furious appetite in my build is here so we're gonna take attack speed maximum health ailment resistance uh rage period taken i don't care for the fire damage so rage period taken uh, that's because i didn't take these points so i want i absolutely want this rage period taken and then fierce appetite into uh, frenzied blows present frenzied blows is uh the number one node to have for each melee build so yeah, it's gonna cost 100% uh, more rage cost for the skills above seven, uh, 750, but he, the damage is gonna be so damn high. Then we move left, we go here and take Bestial Frenzy, 
4% damage for each nearby enemy within a 4 meter radius. And as you will see, we can actually pack a lot of groups. And that means this percentage of uh, damage boost is going to be huge. And then we move left into uh, melee weapon damage, material damage, another material damage, branded burst. Okay, so branded burst, uh, just like this allowing vessel, is going to give us 10 points. Uh, you gain just 5 points instead of 10, but for each point, you get a 50%, 15% uh, sorry, damage decrease. This means if you have 5 points, you're going to take 75% decrease. It's huge. It's really, really huge. You're going to... You know, uh, Brandon Burst makes shields a waste. You can easily uh, replace any shield, any tank, any tankiness with Brandon Burst. And then, I took indifference as well to augment the, those percentage by 5%. So, it's going to be 20% for each 10 point. So, if you make some base math, it's going to be 100% decrease for 5, if you have 5 points. That's completely useful. You're going to tank everything with this. So, I believe Brandon Burst is superb. It's a superb nod. Uh, moving back to here, moving back here to the Zalang Vessel, I didn't show you uh, that I didn't take uh, Salvatore Anchor. So, as I told you, we don't run heavy. So, we don't run Salvatore Anchor and we don't run Elevated Gain. We don't care for it. Moving back to the main tree. Uh, from here we go down, we take Ferocity, we take Material Damage and Attack Speed, we take 2% damage for uh, each 100 consumed, unconsumed Rage Points, and we take plus 35 Rage Generation or Heal, of course, it's uh, self-explanatory for this. Then we move into the Time Weaver tree, uh, here is gonna be Aether Damage, uh, uh, that's just for passive, okay, that's passive dodge chance, but I wanted it because I want to access to uh, which tank cannot heal and die juncture. So first of all, die juncture. So we're going to, we go into maximum element stacks, die juncture, maximum element stacks. So die juncture. Die juncture is superb again. It's uh, another tanky uh, node. We're going to take just the 40% damage. <coughs> And the rest is gonna be delayed, but uh, in you have to consider that during uh, one second we deal a lot of damage. We deal a lot of strikes, and our life leech is gonna refill completely our health. So you basically uh, just take forty percent damage. That's it. There's no more. We so uh, die juncture is mandatory. As for the which tank cannot heal, so which tank cannot heal, uh, as you could see, we are not running either damage. So you may wonder why did I take which tank cannot heal? You may see that's that's a point because you say uh, if you want to apply stasis, you want to have you need to have either damage. No, we want to use uh, trackers reach. As you can see, Tracker's Reach from the description is going to apply Stasis with a 100% chance. So we don't need uh, either damage to apply Stasis. And so, uh, when we hit enemies afflicted with Stasis, they're going to take 100% of the hit damage again after a 1.5 seconds delay. Which means we are going to do that every time. Uh, then from here we move down here. We've take uh, we've taken 25% uh, damage to enemies with impaired movement. Of course it is. We're gonna apply stasis. We're gonna apply um, elements. So why not? 
it's a free boost. Then we go into uh, attack damage here and 10% with uh, two-handed weapon damage. Block efficiency, I don't care about the 8% maximum health, but it's welcome, of course, because we are running, uh, we are focusing on health. But the important nodes here, uh, uh, the important nodes are block efficiency, block efficiency here, block chance, plus six block chance and allows any weapon to block, in mandatory, uh, block chance, Virtual stance. Uh, this is a knock ward node. I've taken it because we want to uh, gain access to uh, stalwart resolve. We don't care for probing weakness uh, because we are not uh, running basic basic attacks, of course. Uh, so while we are in the stalwart resolve uh, stance, we gain. 10% block chance and 25% block efficiency. Of course, our damage is going to be reduced by 25%. But uh, when we are facing uh, mostly the bosses, the tough bosses, which uh, can actually kill you, of course, you want to survive. Of course, you want to have 100% block chance. So as you can see, uh, this is uh, the node we just taken into consideration, virtual stance. Uh, so, we, uh, this is the probing weakness stance. Probing weakness stance is the one which uh, makes, uh, makes us deal double damage when we use basic attacks. We don't use basic attacks, but uh, while you clear the rifts, you want to keep this active because you, want to, you don't want to lose damage. So, when you are against whelps, mobs, or packs, just use probing weaknesses. Uh, when you're going to face the bosses, the tough bosses, by just rolling, you can change the stance. So when you change stance, you're gonna gain uh, the Star Wars Resolve stance. And this is mandatory because when I see you just with the shout buff, we are gonna have, uh, where is it? 100% block chance and almost 30% block efficiency. As you can see, I move, I roll again, so I change the stance. Now 72, now 82, now 24.5, now 28.2. And again, uh, 37, 36. Uh, actually, is 37.5. Uh, no, 37.3 into 36.0. That's why we want to gain uh, prob probing weakness during uh, the clear. Moving back to, uh, let's move back to the nodes. Then from the left, from the right part, we want to go for prod reprisal. If you block an enemy's attack, you instantly deal a percentage of your weapon damage in a counter attack. Uh, we have 100% block chance, so we are always going to deal that damage. And why is this so important? Uh, this is so important because I'm going to show you uh, the I'm going to show you the uh, the sequences uh, the sequence for the skills. So when you are going to face let's assume these guys here are enemies. So let's assume you want to kill these enemies and maybe they are uh, elite ones. The first thing you're gonna do, so you're gonna get closer, you're gonna uh, use blood for blood, you're then gonna jump in to uh, to them, you're then gonna use shout, you're gonna use trackers reach to uh, gain the, get them close to you, and then you're gonna use the damage. During this time, each time you're gonna get hit, you're gonna deal that damage to them, and that damage is about 40k. It's a small amount, but that small amount allows you to life leech. So if you're facing a large pack of mobs and a boss, especially bosses with the powerful trait, which increases by a lot their damage, powerful bosses can considerably one hit, uh, one hit players. Uh, so. When you face those large packs, during this period in which you go in, you get them, you get black, and then you're gonna get hit. 
So if you get hit, uh, you're gonna lose health if you get hit by the boss, but then the webs hitting you are gonna take damage from your uh, reprisal, and thanks to those reprisal, you're gonna life leech into again, you're gonna life leech into max health again. So it's pretty much nice. I really like those, that feature because it gave it gives me uh, much more sustainability. And then uh, finishing the skill tree, uh, and then I will move on with the skills. Uh, we of course taken, uh, as I told you, 25% uh, damage to impaired movement enemies, agility, attack speed. Uh, that's useless, but uh, this is needed to get into the max willpower and rage, max willpower and rage, max willpower and rage, and that's it for the note. So, as you can see, there are a couple of different things. Uh, I didn't take um, I didn't take Alastor. I'm maybe I'm willing to take it, but I need uh, something like one, two, uh, maybe three. For now, critical chance. Uh, this is critical damage. Maybe one. Uh, stamina generator ring. Maybe one, two, three, four. We need five levels more. I'm already level. Um, I'm already level 82, so it's pretty much a high level. So yeah, if we get Alastor, we're gonna get in very, very, very late game. Now, about the skills. First thing you're gonna see is that we are not running Juggernaut. So I'm gonna move into our skills. Uh, we're not running Juggernaut, although I have it prepared because uh, every time I test new things, I'm gonna test uh, every skill. Uh, we don't need Juggernaut. And that's because, as I explained to you, we're gonna tank a lot. A very, a very, very lot. If you want to use Juggernaut instead, uh, use these nodes. So use um, Grudge's Code collected to Grant's Rage, uh, Crushing Wall to inflict a portion of damage. It's, it's not so good, but uh, inflicting, a portion, inflicting a portion of damage allows us to life leech, and this is sustainability uh, nice. Reduce damage received from projectiles, increases absorption, reduces rage cost, reduces cooldown, maximum absorption increased, and as you can see, it's gonna increase by a percentage of our block chance. At the moment, we are not buffed. It's gonna uh, it's gonna raise to 1800. It's a lot. If we buff, it's gonna be up to 2000. So if you uh, if you feel like you're gonna die to some mob or to some boss, or maybe while packing enemies, you uh, you didn't see and you didn't and you unwantedly. Uh, Take an aggro of three bosses, or three or more bosses. By using Juggernaut, you can easily, easily kill all of them while taking their hits. So it's gonna give a huge boost to our defense. Uh, the last uh, uh, modifier is again increases shield absorption. So this Juggernaut is the most tanky thing existing ever <laughs> it's huge i don't use it because i already tank a lot but if you want to feel sure if you want to feel really sure to survive everything to abs to absurdly tank everything you can just remove uh, wings of ishmir and use juggernaut instead that's why because at the moment wings of ishmir is gonna give Poison and bleed. Green edge is gonna be is gonna give poison and bleed. So it's not so mandatory to have wings of Ishmir. We can already uh, move. Uh, we already go gain movement speed with warpath. So if you uh, want to tank, if you want to actually go AFK or just play with one hand while with the other do anything, just use Juggernaut instead of wing or instead of wings of Ishmir. You're gonna you're gonna burst tank everything. I uh, maybe maybe I'm going to show you in the run. 
let's move on into the uh, into our main skills. So the first one is Blood for Blood. Blood for Blood is absurdly strong with these runes. Why? Because um, as I told you, this build can be uh, can be run without the trial. How to do so? Thanks to this node, Unstable Flash. Enemies are gonna explode with less than 10% health. So this node is so strong that you can actually uh, explode everything with just one swing of bleeding edge. And that is thanks to the damage we deal. Then uh, moving to the other modifiers, we have increased damage from enemies suffering from dots, of course, uh, health regeneration for ourselves, nice, nice survivability, uh, increased RR effect in depending on the number of players. So this is not so important. I use it because I find myself often, often playing with other people. Uh, so. In, this, in those cases, it's pretty much nice, so I play it, but you can you can switch it to anything else. Unfortunately, we already have all the one cost wounds, so uh, in this case, it's the only one available. Then we have the damaging RF, the damaging RF effect uh, follows the target, it's mandatory. So we want to cast it on ourselves, and we want the blood for blood to follow ourselves, that's why. Um, as I told you, explode, feed on pain, increase the attack and spell speed each time an enemy dies within the area of the, within the, area, the area of effect. So, uh, without any buff, this is our speed. With that buff, every time we kill something, we're gonna get a huge boost in speed, and that's that's pretty much nice because uh, the speed is gonna further increase our damage. Then uh, increases chance to inflict ailments. Why not? We're gonna run some ailments. Increases duration. It's self-explanatory. Very, very important. Uh, then we have the sovereign shout. So sovereign shout. Why do we want it? Uh, why do we want to use it just after landing on enemies? That's because. Uh, we are gonna, uh, where is it? Uh, okay, we are gonna apply weakness. Here it is. Enemies hit by the shout are inflicted with weakness. So we are, another ailment we are gonna apply 100% sure is weakness. So we already, we already have stasis and weakness. Those are already two. Then we even uh, grant ourselves tanky resistances buff for each enemy t uh, for each enemy hit increases duration uh, for uh, of the buffs uh, grant a temporary block chance buff why not as I told you uh, this is this is the node which allows us to gain 100% uh, block chance so when you face bosses keep spamming it when you see these uh, these buffs go away you just spam again. So we're gonna hit the boss, hit the boss, summon shout, boss, hit the 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 uh, temporary life leech buff. Of course, why not? We're gonna we're gonna survive without a shield with no problems at all. Uh, then we have Tracker's Reach. So as I said, as I showed you before, Tracker's Reach is gonna inflict stasis, hundred percent percent, four seconds, one stack of stasis. And each time you gonna you each time you hit an enemy with stasis, you're gonna augment those stacks. So Tracker's Reach is so damn good. Besides, uh, Tracker's Reach is already uh, an um, an extraordinary skill because you just gonna rush in. You have enemies scattered all around the screen. 
you're just gonna uh, sorry, you're just gonna get them to you it's very very important uh, and you're gonna do by having increases range increases range pulls enemies from all directions so as you can see chains are gonna gonna go uh, from every uh, from every part of our body oh sorry then we have uh, increases range reduces cooldown so we want to get everything into ourselves another way you can play sovereign shot with trackers rage is to uh, first jump in then trackers then shout and then swing it's gonna take a little more a little more time than the first one but it's more effective because you're gonna apply uh, ailments to more enemies then uh, we have wings of ishmir so wings of ishmir is not so important i play it because uh, i want to um, where is it i want to grant myself a buff for each enemy hit on landing that buff is gonna raise our damage yeah that's not so high that's why i say you can easily run juggernaut if you want to absolutely be 100 percent sure uh, to tank everything so you can you can switch wings with juggernaut easily but then we run uh, flight speed we run rage generation and rage generation is super important because uh, i'm gonna show you why uh, let, let, let's say you're gonna you, let's say you're fighting something so you're spam 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 you can, as you can see the rage is gonna drop low then you go this and rage runs high as you can see this is uh, very 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 important uh, standing a protest so as I said to grant buff uh, ailment chance go why not we want some ailments uh, so skill loses its cooldown, cost one one stamina point to use. It was it's what I used. I believe it's super important because, uh, as I told you already, you're gonna spam, you're gonna lose rage, pretty much fast. By the way, we run two rage portions, of course. So if you lose it, you can regain rage by just using. Another way you can use uh, Wings of Ishmir with these stamina points is, you know, you're fighting bosses, okay? So you have the Star Wild Resolve stats. Perfect. You don't want to lose it. Otherwise, uh, otherwise you're going to lose the 100% block chance. So, in this case, if you want to, if you have to roll away from an attack, you can just use Wings of Ishmir. You jump away, you don't, you don't get hit. That's that's why I use the relentless pursuit, and then Meritius crew uh, to increase damage uh, damage dealt in the area or effect. Um, I have to make a point for this because at the moment uh, this node is not working. I have already um, reported it to the Discord, to the walls and stuff. I really hope the devs uh, can fix it as soon as possible, but. Me, or, or, well, let, to, to be more precise, uh, in my case, this node is not working. So, let's hope the, the patch, the next patch will fix this. Uh, then, moving to Warpath, we have increased movement speed. As I told you, uh, unfortunately, our base movement is going to be uh, reduced, so we want to be as fast as possible. This is how we're going to do it. Then we have uh, damaging dealing shockwave at the end of the charge, uh, which is that one, as you can see. Why did I take it? You won't believe it. I took it because I want to destroy uh, crates, I want to destroy rocks, I want to destroy everything, just because I like gaining gold. I like picking gold. And if not of that, if you want to uh, pack a large amount of mobs, so instead of just blah blah blah, you work, you work, you work to lure, you can just use Warpath and the Shockwave is gonna deal damage to the webs which are gonna get aggro to you. That's another reason. Then we have uh, the charge uh, charge kit uh, to channel for longer. 
if we want to, uh, of course, as I told you, we want to be fast and furious. And so that is mandatory. Uh, then, this is this is quite important, to be honest. Least damaging areas of effect uh, on the ground behind you. Uh, these ones. Why is this important? Because um, when you're gonna uh, run through the rift or the untainted run, and you want to be as fast as possible, uh, thanks to the damage we deal, which is huge, uh, this trail is gonna kill the smaller webs, the smallest webs. It's gonna 100% kill smaller webs. So you don't have even to stop and kill them. The, the, the node is gonna do that for you, and you're gonna gain time. Then we do have charge cannot be interrupted by crowd control effect. And that is just because you want to be as fast as furious as possible. Okay, uh, now we do have the our main skill, Bleeding Edge. So Bleeding Edge is gonna be the bread and butter, of course. Uh, we're gonna uh, go for ailment chance score, and that's because I didn't take, as I remind, I am gonna remind you, I didn't take attrition strategies, so I don't have that boost. And because I don't have that boost, I want to increase my my ailment chance score. Then I have reduced rage cost to to spam more, increase damage, increases critical damage. The axe follows you as you move. I told you it's, it's this one. As you can see, it follows. Oh, sorry. Uh, we don't play, of course, Unstoppable Momentum because it sucks right now. And we play Increases Damage Per Ailment Stacks. Of course, we're gonna have some ailments, so this is a huge boost in damage. Very, very huge boost in damage. Uh, okay, I believe that's it for the build. Uh, oh, okay, of course, for the aspect. You can just you can choose whatever you like. So you know, for damage we deal uh, aspects are pointless. They are just very 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 useful to uh, to resurrect your comrades or to just not die if you are in a very very serious situation. <coughs> Sorry. So uh, let's say you play in group. One of your comrades is down. You want to revive him. You just pop up. You go to him. You rest him. Then you leave, move a little further away, and then you close it. Okay, so it's just for it. You, so you can easily choose whatever you like. I like this one because it's it has a sort of uh, you know Devil May Cry effect, stylish. I like that for it, but it's no matter where you play that. Okay, uh, now I'm gonna show you how this build works. So uh, as you can see right here. Uh, unfortunately, uh, my computer is a old one. He's a very old one. He's a low-end computer. Uh, I am not. I, I may be not able to run uh, an untainted run properly. Uh, I've made the screenshot you saw in the opening uh, in the presentation of the video. I can easily uh, run untainted uh, in three minutes. And I can, if you want to uh, gain more proofs, you can just play with me. I can invite you in parties. We can clear them together. I can, you can just follow me to see how the bit works. Uh, so yeah, while recording, uh, my FPS are have dropped by a bit. I don't even have 60 FPS here in the plaza. So I don't believe I'm gonna be able to speedrun anything uh, while recording. What I'm gonna show you instead is how this build works, of course, in the uh, maximum tier with modifiers. Uh, so it, you can actually go randomly with the modifiers. You don't, you don't have to uh, read them and apply them. If you want to read them and apply them, I'm gonna explain how they work. So if you run a build like this and you uh, you are not sure, you're still not sure of your capability, capabilities, uh, 
uh, you don't want to uh, then you can choose projectile damage because if we don't do projectile damage um, uh, this is uh, I, I just don't care for them all so just don't you, you don't want to pick the 50% increased dealt for champion enemies because they are ready uh, the patch notes as I told you uh, uh, nerfed damage by a lot so this is gonna uh, increase the time you need to clear the area so you don't want this one but uh, let's just leave uh, random random uh, crowd control uh, let's gain one more um, let's give another modifier so accept and let's jump in uh, so as you can see it's uh, let's see our FPS. Uh, we're quite fine for the time being. Okay, I'm gonna show you how this works. So, as I told you, you want to uh, do the combo in this way. You can do this, this, track. Uh, you can do uh, the shout, but it's not needed with these small whelps. Uh, what I'm gonna show you, I want to show you uh, how to actually uh, pack enemies and how fast you can easily one hit them right, so buff 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 right. and then that's it in half a second as you can see you can easily eliminate everything we are not in the star wars resolve so i'm gonna show you again how uh, as you can see when i lag even i cannot even pilot the world path when i lag so it's hard for me for my computer to run untainted in three minutes with the fps lock so i'm gonna show you the tactics see you can easily tank everything I, I didn't buff anything, I'm just using the image right now, uh, as you can see we run, with no buffs we run uh, 2.6 millions, 1.8 millions, okay now I'm gonna show you something different, we have a boss there, I'm gonna show you how fast we can kill the boss, so let's pack some enemies, Okay, buff, we go, we go in, shout, then we use green edge, uh, the boss is fine, sorry. So, as you can see, 3 millions, 4 millions, 2 millions, 2 millions, 4 millions, 3 millions, 2 millions, 3 millions, I'm not buffing again. I'm just, I was just using green edge after the first one. With, four, with just 4 ailments, we are giving 4 million strikes. I'm gonna this I'm gonna show you this I'm gonna, I'm taking my time I'm taking it slow because I want to show you the possibilities of the build uh, since I cannot speed run for my low end computer uh, I'm just showing you the possibilities so I'm not buff just go there kill everything and that's it then we use warpath ah I can I cannot pilot it pretty much well now I'm gonna show you our full buff. So full buff, let's take this one. You can see. He explodes. Sorry for the bad FPS. Uh, I'm running a nine year old a nine years old computer, so when I record the when I record the performance drop is pretty much insane. Sorry for this again. But again, as I told you, um, if you want to see me playing it in real life. Uh, you can just add me to the friend list. I'm gonna play some runs with you. I'm gonna unlock under 87 for you. There's no problem for it. Uh, so okay, let's move on into some more uh, some more difficult fights. Let's seek for. Let's look for another boss. Uh, not here. Not right now. Let's just kill this once. So with just the shout, 
you clear like that. Oh, I want a buff because I want to show you uh, the full, the completely full buff. Okay, we have some leads there. Perfect. Okay, what we want to do is one, two, three, four, and then you unleash two. Uh, I have, I had some delay, but yeah, I was using the edge on the null. I cannot control properly without the FPS, so sorry for that. But as you can see, we didn't take a little bit of damage. No once. And that while uh, we annihilated uh, the elites in about 2 seconds, maybe. So as you can see, we have 2.4, 2.5, 3 million damage. With just 3 stacks. I told you, we are not so... We are not so much stacks dependent. So let's look for more, uh, for more difficult fights. Okay, so as you can see, okay, right now my disallowing vessel points are not there, so I even lack some damage boost because I'm moving. I, I, as you can see, I cannot move properly with the warpath, so I'm forced. Oh, there's a boss. Perfect. I'm not. Uh, I cannot, unfortunately use warpath efficiently, so I have to move normally. Uh, sorry again for that, but as I told you, I want to show you uh, how this build works. Uh, okay, so let's try to kill all the mobs and face the boss 1v1. Right now we have 5 stacks. 5 stacks is what we look for. If you can manage to apply 6 stacks, it's even better, but you know, let's just rush to the boss and 1v1. So we have 2.2, 2.4, 4.4, 4.7, and the boss is there. Have you have we lost health? No, we didn't lose any health. And I never dodged anything. So why bother him playing with a shield? As I told you, uh Brandon Burst is gonna allow us to tank pretty pretty insane damage values. Oh, that's the boss. Sorry. I was out of the time. Okay, so let's try killing all the whelps here and face the boss one more. So I'm gonna, oh, there's a legendary. Oh, there's a legendary here. I'm gonna show you how much time we take to kill uh, the boss one v one v one. So without any chance to apply ailment stacks to the boss. Okay, you guys come here. I need to, I need to go to the boss. Okay, now we can run to the boss. So, sorry for my bad precision uh, piloting. Okay, boss strategy. We want Starbucks resolve, okay? So we roll once to get Starbucks resolve. Then, blood for blood, you rush in buff with shout and then we go with the damage. Oh, he's, uh, he has the shield, so when he has the shield you are not gonna uh, lack leech for the time until you uh, destroy the shield, so be careful for that, especially for powerful bosses. I'm gonna rebuff myself. Thanks boss, he just cut me inside. As you can see, look at his eye. So you're gonna deal 10 million damage per hit. 10 freaking million damage per hit. And that was 187 bucks. I, I have never starved my health. I've never been in a critical situation. And that's it. That's, that's how this build is capable of doing 200 burst damage and even, tank, even be tankier than 100 and shield. So I'm gonna cut the, the round for now because the video is taking quite a lot of time, quite a lot of time. Oh my god, uh, what's going on here? Ah, uh, shit, uh, textures are not loading. Okay, so I told you my computer is giving such some trouble, so I'm gonna cut the video for now. Uh, thank you everyone for uh, watching this video. I hope it was, uh, I hope it was fun. I hope it was interesting for you. And if you have any concern, any question, anything, you can simply uh, comment the, below the video or you can look for me into the Discord. I'm uh, uh, the player name is uh, the character name is Sin. 
the player name is uh, irlucius.5670 you can just uh, ask me whatever you want okay uh, thank you again for everything and have a nice playing